Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, this is a game I've grown quite fond of, and I'm going to assume that you've already, you know, uh, possibly even played or seen a fair few more videos, because there's a lot out there already, and quite frankly, a lot of them actually know what they're doing. <laughs> so, so, anyway, to jump right in, uh, I would like to accomplish some goals with this. Uh, I'm going to do a little let's play sort of thing, and I would like to basically reliably achieve orbits around Carbon and the Moon, uh, lunar landing, you know, put up probes, satellites, that sort of thing, you know, uh, getting them in orbit and whatnot. Uh, and eventually, what I'd really like to do is uh, create a, uh, a rover of some kind to explore the. Uh, Lunar surface, which uh, should be quite fun and quite a challenge. Uh, I I have done I've done orbits before. I've done three s relatively stable and circular orbits, but I'm pretty sure they were relatively relatively on accident. So uh, you know that's something we have to work on a fair bit, a fair bit. Um, I also like the add-ons and mods that you can get for uh, Kerbal Space Program, and I'd like to use a fair few of them. The the issue I think is though is if I uh, just install them straight off the bat and jump straight into it, it can be one quite overwhelming, you know, just endless amounts of parts. Uh, two, you, you really can just make an insanely overpowered rocket and just break free on escape velocity and fly off into the abyss. It, it, it's a little, you know, it needs some sort of uh, tearing or stuff. So what I was thinking is perhaps uh, installing maybe one or two mods on each successful mission. So if we do, uh, you know, successful orbits or a successful, um, a successful stock lunar orbit, you know, we can sort of play that off as um, more research through experience, and thus, and then install a mod, and you know, it's like uh, you know, we've acquired new technology, you know, through a new understanding of our newfound ocean of the abyss. Uh, I'd also like to eventually uh, take challenges or, you know, uh, take on some of the challenges that have been posted on the forums and, you know, see how I get on with them. You know, I'm I'm no scientist. I, I'm not very good with all the numbers on, you know, your proper trajectories and all that for orbits. So it's mostly going to be pretty, you know, pretty hairy. Alrighty then, instead of me uh, continuing to babble insanely, let's get on with this. Uh, here we are, we've started the game, and we've got our launch pad over here, and this is our vehicle assembly building. We're just going to jump straight in. Uh, you probably know all this already, but you know, anyway, we're using stock parts, so we've only got one command module, which is fine for the moment. It's all we want, it's all we need. It just fits our kerbals in, and we can launch them into space. Now we need a rocket attached to it, of course, but first of all, we always, this, uh, the way it works is we always start with the last thing that comes back. So it's this, and then the parachute. The parachute, if I remember correctly, deploys at 500 meters when you've activated it. Uh, if you hit the ground, I think at about 13 meters per second, you will die. So this should slow you down to below that. The next thing we want is we want to detach it entirely from the rocket, so we need a stack decoupler. A decoupler does what it says on the tin, it decouples. So we've got that on there now, and just to keep the thing balanced as it's going up, we need an advanced SAS. I really cannot remember what the SAS stands for. It might even be written in this box, but I'm not going to read it. This is its like a guidance computer sort of thing. We can lock it into a straight course, and it will generally you know, keep us steady. There are also these regular SAS modules, which keep us on a fixed, uh, like a fixed momentum. They've got like a gyroscope sort of thing in them of some kind. Um, I don't really 
really use these too often unless I do a really, really long rocket, which I probably will eventually. And the next thing we want is when we're up in space, we want to be able to remove, move around relatively easy. And the best thing to do is use RCS thrusters. And first of all, we'll need an RCS fuel tank, which is because they use different fuel than the uh, regular rocket engine. So we'll put on there. And we're only going to need one fuel tank. We'll need this liquid fuel tank, this is. I'm sure you already know all this, but just in case. And just to help us steer, we're going to use this smaller engine because it has thrust vectoring. Yes, we like to vector our thrust. So this is the rocket, nearly done, and here we take our RCS thrusters. Now, that's way too many. So we've got this symmetry button up here, and we can change it to how many? So we've got four quadrants, so there's four, which is about the best. We want to line them up. Um, I used to do them like in little neat patterns like this, but it's it just fights against you because you get too off firing in the wrong direction and it throws you all over. It's good to balance them out like this sort of thing. You know, that way you're on your equal planes of axes, you see. This is basically going to be our rocket that's going to be orbiting the planet and then re-entering. Now we need to get it in the air. And I think what I'm going to do is it's, you build your rocket in stages, of course, so uh, as you go up and you empty your fuel, you can ditch the dead weight, so to speak. So we'll grab another stack decoupler, and we'll shove it on the engine, and what we're going to do is, for the moment, we're just going to add another mm, three of these fuel tanks, and this time a large liquid fuel engine. Enduring? Engine. <laughs> See, I throw my words around like it's soup. Yeah. And then we'll attach another decoupler. This rocket's already getting... Oh, no, we didn't want to grab that. There we go. This rocket's getting pretty big already. We've grabbed a decoupler. Now we're going to grab this other thing here, which is a stack tricoupler. It's not a decoupler, it's a tricoupler. I've seen people place them directly on and wonder why they don't shoot off. It's because they're not a decoupler, it's a tricoupler. So that'll do that, and that will give us three mounting points. Now we're going to grab these, and just for simplicity, we'll put it on three times symmetry. Symmetry? See, I'm messing my words up all the time. You know, totally not drunk. It's the middle of the afternoon. Alright, so we're just going to continue like this and give ourselves a fair bit of fuel. I think one more tank just for good luck. Sometimes it can be a little funny. It's getting better. The game is still heavy in development. The next version you'll have to pay for. It's currently free. Uh, I'm definitely going to. Uh, I should actually pre order this game. Just out of sheer. Because it's awesome. And you should too. <laughs> right. Uh, this is a rocket. This is a rocket of some description. It's probably good, not going to get very far. Something to note is these stacks are just going to shake about like crazy. So a good thing to get in the habit of doing is grabbing your stuck strut connector. We're still on three times symmetry, and we're just going to we're just going to tack these together like this. And we look around. Ooh, ooh, a little hard. And wow, they weren't aligned very well, were they? They'll work. They'll work. They're a bit messy. Mm, I'm actually going to change that. I don't like it messy. That's what she said. Uh, it's better. It's better. It's better. And just for safety, I'm going to put another one up here. These do weigh, and you know they they weigh uh, not very much at all. But it's better to have them than to not have them. I think what this needs now is some sort of fins or stability. You know, we'll we'll launch it and we'll see what needs to happen. Hopefully, we can save our kerbals if it goes wrong. I'd like to keep a count of uh, how many poor kerbals die. 